Hey all, my name is Kimberly Weimer and I am an over 50 makeup teacher. So today on this live, we are going to conquer all things over 50 issues with makeup and how we can enhance what the good Lord gave us without necessarily covering it up or feeling overdone with makeup. You know, I think sometimes when we get to this age, and, and, and I don't mean that, I don't mean this in a negative way at all, actually in the most positive way, when we get to a point where we have more sophisticated skin, we, can, we kind of have to tweak things, right? We can't go about doing our makeup the same way that we did when we were 20 or 30. So what I have come to Instagram to do is to teach simple, easy makeup tips to help you love makeup again. So for me, I ended up um, finding cream products back in 2021 during the pandemic. And um, that was godsend number one. You know, the fact that I ended up experimenting with makeup during the pandemic when you couldn't get into a store to be able to test any products, it was craziness, so it was meant to be. And then beyond that, what I was able to do once I found what cream products were doing for me, I, I was like, well, if I'm just now finding cream products and how great they are on my more sophisticated skin, then sure as heck, somebody else needs to know about it. And that's what brought me to social media. So um, along the way, I need to tell you that I am by trade, a, a, I'm a public school educator. I retired from public school education after 25 years. I've taught everything from first grade all the way up to sixth grade, multiple subjects. I'm a teacher. It's what I do. It's who I am. So, um, and I'm very upfront and transparent here. I don't have a, I'm not a makeup artist, okay? What I am is a 54-year-old woman who is a teacher who learned what worked for me and over the course of the last three years, <laughs> uh, apparently math was not my subject, um, over the course of the last three years, I have put makeup on a lot of faces and given a lot of tips and talked about makeup from a layman's point of view, from somebody who was just a novice at this. You know, I think sometimes it when you are in a particular field, it's hard for you to go down to the very basics. Um, and that's what I do. I'm going down to the very basics and not, assuming that a lot of people who are following me just don't really know a lot about makeup. And the reason I'm assuming that is because that was me. <laughs> that was who I am. Uh, that was who I was. And now I love what I do and it has proven to work uh, for me and for so many others, these tips that I'm learning from other people far more qualified than me, for sure. But I'm bringing them in a scaled down, simple version. So if that's not what you want, that's what I'm bringing. So I'm just going to throw that right out there. Um, so I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, we're going to troubleshoot all things sophisticated skin today. We're going to talk about lip lines. Mm -hmm. Got them. Never smoked a day in my life other than uh, the last day of my senior year. I smoked like some cigarettes and I've never touched one since, but you know, that was the cool thing to do. Um, but I drank through straws. I was a school teacher, whistled a lot. Yeah, let me know where you're from. Chattanooga, awesome. Thank you for letting me know. Um, under eye bags uh, or sunken under eyes, dark under eyes. We're going to talk about um, what happens when we lose elasticity and collagen in our skin and everything starts to drop. We're going to talk about creepy eyelids. So hang in here with me for the next, let's say, a half an hour. Um, I will upload this live to my page. If you don't currently follow me, I highly suggest you clicking my photo and just click follow right now and then jump back in um, so that you continue to see all these little t teeny tiny tidbits of 
really brief little ways that you can enhance your makeup look to be whatever it is that you want to be wherever you are in whatever stage of life because here's where I'm coming from. I'm trying to look the best at the age of 54 that I can, okay? I'm not trying to look 20. I'm not trying to look 30. I'm trying to look the best at the age of 54, and I have found that cream products allow me to do that, just giving me a polished look. So let's jump in. First and foremost, as we age, we our skin is getting drier, okay? That's hormones, ah, amongst all the other things that hormones do, uh, it dries us out. So you have got to figure out how you are going to hydrate your skin, okay? That can come in multiple different forms. That can come in drinking plenty of water. I always have water with electrolytes in it. That can come with finding a skincare routine that focuses on nourishing your skin barrier, healing your skin barrier. Because what we don't realize a lot of, about is that some of the products that we're using are actually damaging our skin barrier and drying us out. So um, find a product line that is nourishing and healing to the skin barrier. You got to hydrate it. Awesome. You use the same skincare routine that I do. I do. I, I love this Korean skincare that I found back in April that has completely transformed my skin. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about that, comment the word K and skin. I'll get that to you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and just show you. I have, did my skincare and then that's all I have on my face. Did that hours ago, but I'm going to rehydrate. So I'm going to use, this is a piece of that Korean skincare. It is actually a balm that um, is great for under eye circles, but it's great for hydrating under the eyes. I'm going to hydrate my 11s, all right? Um, even up here where my face moves, you know, my face moves there. Uh, right here around my eyes where I can get a lot of creasing. Guys, you can use it as a chapstick, my nasolabial folds everywhere. So um, this is the Balm, B-A-L-M, but it has sea berry in it, which is really good for the skin, all natural. Um, so hydrating is very, very, the very minimal thing, first thing that you need to do. Second thing you need to do, sunscreen. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the sunscreen this is, this is uh, the sunscreen from Rimon, which is the Korean skincare that I have been using and finding that is literally turning back the clock. My other skincare, which was good, okay, was good, had me in maintenance mode, all right? So if you feel like you're in maintenance mode, like if you have a skincare routine, but you're like, like, okay, it's... I love the skincare, but it literally looks, my face looks exactly the same as it did, um, you know, a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, then are you in maintenance mode? So the Korean skincare might be something you might want to look into. All right. So sunscreen is the very next, um, thing that you want to, how, how do I hook you up here? So all you've got to do, you should be able to see my picture. In the upper corner, you just see me, I think I have glasses on. If you click on that, you'll it'll take you to my profile and then you should be able to click follow. So that's how you get to me, but you can also find me at Kim Light of Your Face all the time. All right, so let's talk the next step. So now that I've hydrated and I have put my sunscreen on, Sometimes a primer might be the next thing that you would try, okay? A primer. If you're gonna use cream products, or this goes for any kind of products, if you're using a foundation that has a silicone ingredient in it, okay? Because some liquids um, have, an, some liquids have a silicone ingredient, maybe dimethicone or something in it. It is the binding, helps to bind it then you need a primer that has silicone. 
if you're using a, a product that is water-based, which is the makeup that I use, the cream product that I use is water-based, then you want a water-based primer. I do want to say this. I used to use primer all the time. But since my skin is in the best shape of my life, I don't even need a primer anymore. So it's very freeing, but I do want to say that because I totally get it. I was a primer girl. Thank you for those of you that are helping each other. I love when you guys help each other, tell each other where to go. <laughs> I saw somebody tag Irene to give her directions. You guys are so good. Um, this is, if you just type sunscreen, I'll get you the link to it too, okay? But it is also the Korean skincare. It is a chemical sunscreen, I'm gonna say that. So you have to decide if chemical sunscreens are for you. I am 54, okay, 54. All right, next thing is, I'm gonna jump into my cream products and I'm going to explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it. So first and foremost, if you have been using one shade of foundation, all over your face, ask yourself why, okay? Because I'm going to show you an alternative way where you're using less makeup that makes so much more sense. So um, the, the very first thing that you want to think about is adding dimension to your face. Because if you take one color of foundation and apply it all over your face, now you have made your otherwise three-dimensional face into a one-dimensional face, okay? All right, so right now, I don't have any makeup on, but what you can see is you can see the shadow right here, okay? That shadow is a natural shadow. That is giving my face dimension and shape. It's accentuating my cheekbones. You can see shadow up here. Right along here, you can see there is a shadow. It's dark. Right here, that's a shadow that's going right down my nose. All right, if I take one color of foundation and I put it all over, I've just literally taken all of the dimension out of my face. So we wanna keep that dimension and we're going to apply products in those exact same spots that's still going to give us the coverage that we want. Okay, because I believe that most women wear foundation to cover their skin, to even it out. But there is a way to even it out without. So um, again, I love a polished look. And so with cream products, you can get a polished look because they don't dry down. I'm just going to be feathering the makeup in where I feel like I need it. Let me readjust my lighting a little bit. I just pulled up my blind. Right now you're just seeing me in natural light. Like I'm sitting in front of, uh, my, I have a beauty room here and I'm sitting in front of the window staring out into my yard that is desperately dry and needs rain. So um, you're looking, no filters, this is just me. So I have cream products here and I have a multitude of colors in my one compact. All right, I have foundations, I have contours, bronzers, lip and cheek colors, I have eyeshadows. So I'm gonna work from my one compact makeup, but I want you to take the principles that I'm teaching and apply it to whatever you have in your makeup bag. Um, the colors that I have in my compact are specific to my skin tone, okay? So a lot of times as we get older, we are using the wrong color. If you've been using the same color for 10 years, it's probably time to change what color because our skin changes even from season to season. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm first going to add, right where I have that natural shadow already, I'm just gonna add a little bit of bronzer there. All right, so I have my bronzer right here. It's in cream form. I have a fluffy brush and I'm just going to dab a wee little bit of product. With cream products, they don't dry down, so when I can, I can actually move my face and it's not gonna crack and crease, all right? Um, and that's what's so great about it because as we get older, that's what happens is our makeup cracks and creases. 
And I'm going to just really lightly buff this bronzer, or you can totally use a contour if you like a contour. And I'm going to do it just where that dimension is. If you need help, like if you want to build a compact like mine, I can totally do that for you. I can help you build a compact for you. All you gotta do is comment the word color match or match and I'll get you the links. That's totally free. That is no obligation. You're not obligated to get the products. I'll give you your colors that are recommended for you so that you can build a compact and know for sure that the colors in your compact are exactly what you need. It's hard to believe it's all done with a selfie, okay? Just in this light, you're gonna step over to your window and you're gonna snap a selfie and you're gonna put it there. Your selfie is safe with me. I do not share it. I know that that is a very, um, it's it's very difficult to send a, a makeup free selfie to somebody that you don't know. And I take that very seriously. So now I'm gonna decide, okay, do I want more dimension or not? All right, all you've got to do right there where it says comment, you're just going to type the word match or color match and I will get your colors, I'll get you the link. You have to do your part, fill out the little form, takes you a minute or two, send me a selfie and that color match is free. Okay, I want to get you set up because having the right colors in front of you makes your life so much easier. So I took that natural dimension and made the letter C. You know, that's what we're given. Like we are truly given that. Our faces are are beautiful and they're sculpted like that for a reason. Use it to our advantage. Somehow as time has passed, we have been taught to like cover up your face and make it look like somebody that you don't know. And I want to look like me, only better if that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna go in with a little bit. Guys, I am feathering this. Like I'm even hardly touching my face with the brush. This wouldn't be a situation like with a maybe a liquid or a powder where you are, are putting lots of product on your hand and going in and you can see it on your face. It's not like that. Like I'm buffing it in. All right, so we talked about this area right here, right? I mean, I don't have any makeup on there. Like that's not makeup, that's natural shadow. And also the sun at some point was hitting me there. It's natural. So what I wanna show you though, is I'm gonna take a contour, it's right here. Okay, contours are, are warmer, or I'm sorry, are cooler typically. They have a little bit more gray. And I'm going to take some contour right down that natural shadow. This is a really fun way of slimming your nose, okay? So if you have a wide nose or and you want to try and make it look slimmer, you could totally do this. And you can even make these two lines skinnier if you want. I just followed the natural contour of my nose because I wanna show you. Um, so, and absolutely, so if you get matched from me, and you purchase, you get a whole video from me that shows you how to apply it. Um, and I'll check in on you and make sure things are good, okay? So this is contouring the nose. We're gonna deal with that in a minute, so don't be scared, I'm not gonna leave it like that. And then the other place, because over 50, we start to get the gobble gobble or, or a double chin that might already been sitting in long before 50. Um, we're going to go ahead and contour the jawline. So I'm going to show you how you can even use your fingers to do this. Okay. I will send you whatever it is that you need, Irene. You can be assured. Okay, honey, I'll get it to you. Now I am going right along my jawline. So I'm going to zoom in for you because I have jowls. Okay. Jowls are these saggy part right here. When I come across the saggy part, I'm just gonna come, keep coming clear across because contour helps an area to recede, all right? And I want to make sure that this looks more even as opposed to dipping. 
if that makes sense, okay? So then I'm gonna go in on this side, right along the jawbone until I hit this area right here, the saggy. I'm gonna come right over top of that and then stay back on the bone. All right, we're not gonna leave it like that. Let me back up just so that you guys can, whoop, <laughs> all right. So I've contoured, I've added depth to my face, but it's only where I naturally had it. All right, maybe, just maybe, my skin had started to settle. Things have started to kind of, mm, gravity set in, you know exactly what I mean. In this area right here, it's totally okay to set your contour, your bronzer just a little bit higher. Because if you follow the natural line, look how much lower it is than where I put the bronzer. Then you can almost get this hollowed out look, more like a skeletor. And you don't want to, if you, if you naturally have this hollowing out, if you're gonna put a darker color there, it's gonna look, make it look more hollow. So I put it up a little bit higher to draw the eye upward. So give me a heart if you are starting to learn and hear some things that you can apply to your current routine already because that's my goal as your makeup teacher is to be giving you things that you can use right the minute that you leave here, okay? So I don't have any, I haven't had any injectables, any fillers, it's just me. Okay, just me. All right, so, um, and if you, if that's you, you go, you, you do you. I'm just choosing to just do this the natural way, if that's okay. Um, all right, so what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna go in with this fluffy brush and just lightly feather it down onto my deck, okay? I do wanna leave a shadow but I don't wanna blend it all out. And I don't wanna leave a line, okay? That would look ridiculous. And then we're gonna blend it on down. All right. And I see I get this really white mark here just because the sun never hits it. So I wanna make sure with bronzer that we can fill that in. This brush, Tammy, is called the Shape Brush with Saint. Um, and if you're asking for any of the links, you can, I think this one's on sale, 25% off, I believe. It's the silver one, it's on sale. All right, so what am I gonna do right here? I'm not gonna do anything just yet because we have another piece that's coming. All right, so the next color I'm gonna jump into is my main foundation shade. So this would be whatever color you've been using, this is the main shade. And the purpose of the main shade is to even out and provide coverage where you need it. But it's not automatic, like has to go everywhere. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna put it where I've already put product, that would be silly. So the idea for your main, Saint calls it a main highlight, but your main foundation shade is just to even out. So where would that be? It primarily is in the cheek area, all right, above the upper lip. This, you can see the bottom of my tin, but I literally have had this for months, okay? If you are going through this product really quickly, or if your face feels sticky, well, you're using way too much because you shouldn't even feel it on your face. And I keep going back in to grab product as I want to fill in. You know, there are days where I don't need very much makeup. And then there are days where didn't get any sleep, um, didn't hydrate well the day before, all the things. And so this, um, I might need more makeup. I am using uh, a palette this is my own personal palette that I built by a company called Saint. And it's all color matched to me. 
And if you're interested in getting something that's more personal to you with all of your colors that you can build, then all you've got to do is comment the word match. And I'd be happy to color match you so that you can build your own palette with colors that are just perfect for you. All right, so um, I am using, Peggy, I am using hazel. Yep, I'm using hazel. Now I'm gonna apply just a wee little bit right here. But you know, when I think about my forehead, Saint is coming to the UK, we're told in September. So if you want the link, you want to make sure that you let me know that you want the link to be alerted when we come to the UK, because it's coming. Um, this area right here, I like to leave a little lighter. Okay, so I'm my goal is to take this little triangle right here and make it a little bit lighter. The dimension comes in the perimeter. Okay, that's where the darker area is. The coverage comes, your main highlight, somewhere in the middle. And then we're going to bring light to area, areas that we want to bring forward, okay? These are the areas we want to bring attention to without accentuating too much texture. So let's move on to the next color. So I've used a bronzer to add dimension, or you could also use a contour. I've used my main foundation shade in order to pr provide coverage where I just need to even out. And now I'm gonna use a lighter color. You may call it a concealer, okay? But your concealer should never be more than one or two shades lighter than your foundation shade. So if you're using something that is way lighter, then you may be accentuating, you may be accentuating texture that you don't want, that you want to distract from instead of bring attention to. And when y'all, when I had very great skin with hardly any texture, I could probably use a lighter color. But this is one of the over 50 makeup tips that Kim is telling you right now. Your concealer shade needs to be one or two shades lighter than your regular foundation shade, okay? So I'm gonna use this color and it actually has a little bit of pink in it. This one is called Palace, all right? And I'm gonna put a little bit on my ring finger and I want you to watch strategically where I put it. Um, hyperpigmentation, bronzer is really great for hyperpigmentation. It is, it's totally good and you don't put it where you have hyperpigmentation, you put it in the area where you don't. Think about that for a minute, because the idea is to even out your skin tone. Yes, my hyperpigmentation up here has totally lightened since Remon. So again, if you want the information on the skincare, just comment K Skin, it will come to you. Here we go, this is We'll say it's concealer, but Kim's gonna call it an accent because I want to accentuate certain areas and bring light to them to bring them forward. So here is one area. Here is another area. So this is just like corners of the eye on down along the nose. If you have large pores right here, don't put this there, okay? Because that is too light of a color. Only go to here, okay? So use a little bit of, use a little bit of, I don't wanna say common sense because that sounds so rude, but I don't mean that. I just mean do what you know that you need for your face, okay? This is, the principles are universal, but you also have to do what's right for you. The other place that I'm gonna go with my accent is right down the middle of that contour, okay? You guys can start to see what's happening. I have these deep 11s. If I put that light color right there, what's it gonna do? It's going to accentuate 
those deep 11s. I'm not doing that. Oh, the Korean skincare, which nourished my skin barrier and healed it, it, it dumped the water because it has a key ingredient like that's a patented ingredient. It's called Jeju Energy Lava Water. It has special water that has been in the bedrock of the Halasan volcano for 400,000 years. So it's extremely powerful uh, elixir, so to speak. All right, so now what are we gonna do? Let's blend a little bit, because I wanna show you how cream products truly blend like butter. The entire time, the cream has been warming up to my skin um, because my face is warm. So it blends like butter. So when I blend this, I'm gonna do more of a tapping motion and I, I like to use my fingers a lot too, so I can just tap because I don't wanna blend it all the way out. I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap. These brushes are saint brushes. If you have ever thought about, you know, starting a little business on the side, um, Remon is a brand new company in the United States, but it is the number one skincare company in Korea. And so it is Korean skincare and um, it's the number one skincare in South Korea, which is the size of the state of Indiana. And you can become a planner for $20. Um, if you have a creative side, if you have a business mind, but you don't have like the actual money to, to like get an inventory and all the things that a lot of businesses need in the capital, it might be a good way if you love skincare to get your own business started. So you can just let me know if that's something that you're interested in. Um, but because you don't need to carry an inventory. I am using Saint Makeup and I'm talking about Rimon, which is the new Korean skincare that has come to the United States. It's taken it by storm. All right, so let's continue on. I'm just hoping and praying that my phone holds out because I just noticed the battery alarm went on. All right, so did you see what ended up happening? So all I did was just lightly blend all of this. And I'm gonna zoom in because I want you guys to know like Kim does up close makeup. What's important for me when I go out to talk to somebody is I still look like me, okay? So yay, Patricia. So this is, this is my makeup, okay? You can still, just has a little bit of a glow, some extra coverage, but this is me. All right, let's talk about um, lip lines, shall we? All right, so um, this particular product has been the best that I have found for lip lines. And it is, it's an eyeliner in a flesh tone. It's by Rimmel. If you just comment that you want the, the um, lip line, the let's call it flesh tone lip liner, all right? I'm gonna zoom in. Do not buy the products on Amazon. Oh, not the skincare products. We are, were told, we were found out that, or we found out that people are repackaging false skincare on Amazon and trying to sell it as Remon. Don't do that. Okay. This is flesh tone and I am applying it above my lip line before I do my lip color, okay? I have, I do self tan, but I haven't for a couple of months. This is just a natural tan, but I do wear sunscreen. Listen, if anybody uses Remon here already, will you please let me know if the color of your skin has changed and that it looks healthier over time? because that's truly what's happened. Like I wear sunscreen all the time, but the fact that my skin just looks healthier, kind of crazy. All right, guys, can you see that? Is that not crazy? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna eventually put lip color on, but just using that flesh lip liner uh, helped to distract from the lines. It's craziness. All right, let's talk about crepey eyelids. 
If you're not using an eyeshadow primer first, well, let me let this be your sign to use an eyeshadow primer. All right, I love this one by Sigma. Let me back up because I feel like I'm on your face and your grill. Um, this is a flat, or this is a, um, it's an eyeshadow primer. If you're an eyeshadow lady, then you can put this on and it will keep your eyeshadow on for a long time. I'm gonna, hold on, let me show, make sure that's the right color. It's not the color that I like all the time. This one is, hold on, what is this one? Bubbly, it's not the one I wanted. My favorite, hold on. I'm gonna rub bubbly in, but I'm gonna put persuade over it. And do you see the reason that I don't love bubbly? It's because it's too sparkly. That's what happens when you don't have your glasses on and you're trying to work inside your phone. I'm gonna take bubbly off. Bubbly has a place, but it's not right now. I'm gonna use persuade. All right, and persuade is a, make sure this is persuade, <laughs> good grief. All right, persuade has a peachy tone to it, so, and it's more of a matte. That had a shimmer to it. And I like it for evening, you know, on my lid only, but definitely not up underneath my brow. So this is Persuade, and it also has like some color correcting properties in it simply because it is more of a peachy color, which will help to color correct any blue and purple. And I have a whole lot of these really purpley veins on my eyelids. So on many days, I just like the primer and my mascara and I'm off. All right, so just let me know if you want the link. But if you're not wearing an eyeshadow primer, you're gonna want one because if you're noticing that your eyeshadow isn't lasting all day long, well, that's why. And as we get older and our eyeshadow, our eyes get crepier, okay? They just stick and get wrinklier and also oilier or drier, either one of those things. So you want to make sure that a primer is going to prep your eyelids for whatever you're putting on them or nothing. All right, you just decide. All right, so um, what I have not done anything of yet is color correcting underneath of my eyes. And the reason that I waited until later to do it is to prove a point. Because, I'm gonna zoom in. Oh, here I am. All right, so here's my point. When you start off worrying about the area that is you're the most uncomfortable with, in most cases for women, it is their dark under eyes, okay? So if you start worrying about it, then you end up putting more product under your eyes than what you need. So what I decided to do this time was to work in reverse and show you how much less product I actually need once I pull my start to pull my face together. So really, in reality, this area right here, so you can see a little bit of this purple area that needs color corrected still. So let's do it. I'm going to use a salmon pink color. This color corrects blue and I'm only going to tap it where I need it. So hopefully some of these principles that I'm teaching will resonate with you and whatever kind of makeup that you use, that you'll be able to think of makeup just a little bit differently because it's never a bad thing when you're applying less makeup, but yet you're getting the desired look out of using less makeup. You just have to be a little bit more strategic about it. All right. When you are using the right color color corrector, like I'm gonna zoom in because you can't even see the peach because the blue, the peach was exactly what the blue needed, if that makes sense. All right, Gail, you have white under eyes. So this is a different issue, right? I actually did a reel on this. You want to add color then to your under eye. You can do that with a bronzer. You can take a wee little bit of bronzer. I'm not gonna do it right now, but I'll show you. If you take a, a fluffy brush and a wee little bit of bronzer and your under eyes are so white, you actually want to add a little bit of color there as opposed because if you take your foundation which is one color and you apply it under your light under eyes well it's still going to be lighter right 
So what are you gonna do? You're gonna have to apply more under your under eyes, which then is going to end up creasing eventually. So if you take a little bit of a bronzer, or Saint actually has, um, they have this color called NV, which is a neutral violet. It has low opacity. That's a really good product to use as well. And Sharon, if you have purple under eyes, you're going to want to find something with yellow in it. So this color corrector has the peach on one side and the yellow on the other. So this could be for blue or for purple. This is from Amazing Cosmetics. Just let me know that you want the color corrector link and we'll get that to you. All right, let's do eyeshadows. I'm hoping my phone hangs on. If, you, if I cut out, guys, you know it's just the fact that my phone died, but we're going to hang in there. I already applied my um, my eyeshadow primer and I'm gonna use one color, okay? We're gonna keep this uber simple for everybody and I'm going in with a cool neutral, okay? This one right here is called Cafe and I'm gonna dip into it with a fluffy brush. I'm gonna tap off the excess and I am going to place this above, so if I'm staring straight in, above my crease above my pupil and just start to lightly feather it in because I don't want to stick it in my crease. I have deep set eyes, but this also goes for hooded eyes. If you place something in your crease with hooded eyes, nobody's going to be able to see it. If I place too dark of a color in my deep set eyes, it's just going to make the crease look even deeper, which then for me, I feel makes it look too harsh or makes me look skeletorish. So I'm gonna use something that's just a little bit lighter. Transition shade is what we refer to it and going in above my eyeball, above my crease first, and then just kind of working it in. Coming down on to my lid if you want to, but you have a lot of flexibility when you're using the right color. This one, I, again, is called Cafe. It's, it's like a cool neutral. Popping it right above my crease, not here, not here, above my crease, and then just kind of windshield wipering it around. All right, hooded eyes, crepey eyes, deep set eyes. You see me working this color in. If you have crepey eyes, it's going to take a little bit more working, right? They're not, not as soft and smooth. So you're gonna have to make sure that you get the color everywhere it needs to be. If it falls in your crease, it's no big deal, but it's just not gonna be placed as bold. All right, we're gonna take that same color I'm gonna flip a brush over and just use a smaller end and tap it off. And I'm just gonna pull it underneath of my eye as my eyeliner, okay? Using a shadow for a soft look in the under eye area is so attractive and feminine, I believe. Um, the days of the harsh black eyeliner for me are over. And I know that a lot of it has to do with how you apply it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of mascara on, and then we're gonna add some cheeks and lips before my phone dies. Having color on your face as you get older, when we start looking more sallow, is imperative to having that overall glowy, healthy look, okay? We are coming to the UK. Um, Saint is coming to the UK and I'm hoping, uh, so those are the areas we are aware of in September is what we are told. We don't have a definitive date, but it's coming. I would love to, um, if you're interested in getting even matched to a collection, which can even save you money, um, just comment the words level up. It's not in South Africa yet. Currently, Saint is only in the United States and Canada, but coming to the UK, then going to Australia, then going to Mexico. Um, Rimon 
is coming to Hong Kong. So if you are in Hong Kong and you would like to get in on a ground floor opportunity with this Korean skincare, you let me know because I will send you the information. Okay, um, little tidbit. Concentrate on the outer corner when you're putting mascara on because it brings the eyes up, right? All right, so let's add a little bit of color to the lips. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna use this. I wanna show you guys, cause this is a fierce pink. It almost looks like a fluorescent pink. But when you're using cream products, they go on so naturally. So can we just take a look at what this color does for me? And keeping a really light pink, I don't care who you are, even if it's just on this part of your, your cheeks and then you go darker on up, it gives you a nice, sweet, youthful appearance, okay? Same with having a peach. Uh, more info on the Korean skincare, just comment K, skin. K like in Kim and skin, and the links will come to you guys. Thank you all for being here and for hanging. And most of you guys have hung in here the entire time, which I hope you have learned some things um, that you can use in your own routine. I'm gonna go ahead and use a lip liner. And this is a couple of shades darker than my normal skin tone. And I'm gonna start not all the way out here in a little bit. And follow it along the vermilion border, which is just underneath of the lip line stopping short, not going all the way to the corner. Our lip starts to angle down and curl under the older we get. So if I go from here to here, I'm gonna look like the Joker and I don't want that. So then on the top, same way, right underneath of that flesh tone liner that I applied for my lip lines. I have cool undertones, so sometimes I have to be really careful about um, what colors I use because I have cooler undertones, even though I tan well. And then I'm gonna go in with, let's see, I'm gonna go in with almost like a nude flesh tone and apply it in the middle. So outlining with like a little darker color. All right, just for kicks and giggles to make sure that my skin is, I don't have any makeup sitting on top of my skin, I'm gonna take a beauty blender. I love this one because you can use it damp or dry. It is by a company called Stands Out. You can mold it to any shape, any tiny shape. So I'm gonna grab it and then I'm gonna just do this once over and it's gonna pick up any excess makeup that could be sitting on top of my face. And especially in that under eye area. It's not removing the makeup, it's only picking up the excess. There are different colors for warmer. So we have warmer skin tones and cooler skin tones. And so if you get a color match by me, I will look at your skin tone and I will give you colors that are going to complement it for sure. This is dry right now because I can use it dry. This is the only beauty blender that I've found that you can use damp or dry. If you get one of these, don't ever use it dry. Run it under water, squeeze it in a towel and then use it. This one is, I love this. I have a code for this, I believe. So if you asked for this, I'll give you the uh, code for it because I think you get 20% off. You guys have been awesome. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for spending, it's probably been more than a half an hour with me. Um, I hope you've learned a little bit and I hope that you'll click follow, okay? Always in the daylight. Please make sure that if you send a selfie to me that it is in the daylight, not laying in your bed, take off the flash on your phone, turn off your overhead light, okay? Just in natural light. Like I wanna see what your skin truly looks like in natural light not in your bathroom lighting, okay? You guys are awesome. My name is Kim. I'm your over 50 makeup teacher, and I'll see you soon.